Alright guys, so welcome to this uh, video for today. So we will be analyzing uh, the one and only former Bayrish branch. As you guys know, this branch is going to be the crucial point for a major decision in terms of the transit world for the next couple of years. Because as you guys know, this will be that branch that could potentially be used for the IBX line. As you guys have been noticing on the channel, that has been a feature that I've been covering a lot over these past couple of months if not i don't want to say years because it's been a year that i've been on with it but i could definitely tell you right now it's been a couple of months in which i have made sure to concentrate on that specific topic because as you guys know the ibx would be by far the most transformative transit project in the history of new york city the reason why i'm saying that is because not only will it make travel faster within both brooklyn and queens but it'll be the first time in which we would experience a light rail system in the MTA history because I don't think we have experienced light rail in Staten Island, in the Bronx, in Queens, nowhere. We have experienced railroads, we have experienced a subway, but not light, light rail. So it's definitely going to be really interesting. Uh, the challenge once again, and this could be something that I could go on with hours, so I believe we could, or I could, definitely dedicate a discussion series with what lies ahead with this because you guys have been noticing when we did uh now when i did that series where i say abandoned track it technically isn't abandoned because as you guys know that track is currently owned by the new york and atlantic railway or at least they use that track to transport whatever they need to transport throughout that corridor but it is actually in service. It is actually active. The reason why I say abandoned is because in the transit world, you don't really use it. It's not used for subway. It's not used for anything else, but just for freight. So that is why I refer to it because there was a couple of viewers. And I actually do respect this because that also says that the viewers really look out for not only just the videos itself, but the way I name the titles. Because there were a couple of viewers that said, well, you know what? That track is not really abandoned because it is actually used by, once again, the New York and Atlantic Railway. And so I definitely appreciate that. But I just wanted it to sound much more interesting so that I could catch the attention of the viewers. And I have been noticing that in the first part. There was a lot of views in that first abandoned track showing where I will show in Google Earth exactly what I'm talking about. The sections in which I showed. So the first one, I remember it was Flatbush. I'm sorry, it was Avenue 8 station around that area where the track uh, is adjacent to the Avenue HQ train station. And after that, I showed Ocean Avenue and then we uh, wrapped it up showing the portion at Notion Avenue, which unfortunately you can't really see that much track because you have a lot going on around there because there was a there is a huge mall that they built there. So because of that, you can't really see that much, although we did uh we did actually see uh the track in a certain portion. You have to go to a specific location in fact. But we were able to see it. But you will notice that we will keep on going ahead and ahead and ahead. The last time that we ended was specifically at King's Highway and Farragut Road, from what I remember. And so from there, the goal is to keep going and going and going. And that is the goal. And the reason why I'm saying that is because this what I'm gonna be what I'm gonna be showing you guys in this video is gonna be uh, analytical, which is. I'm going to be going over the history. I'm going to show you guys how everything looks on Google Earth. Then when we go out there and show you guys how it looks in real life, that is experimental. 
So that's just something that I, I have been noticing that I've been doing. So for example, like in the Lower Monsoc branch, I did show you how Richmond Hill looks in Google Earth and throughout the history that we use using sources, but then you guys noticed that we went outside for that. So the same is gonna be for this. So I don't apologize for this huge tangent because I know this video has to do with the Bayerish branch, but this is key because now we're gonna find out the actual history of what led to this abandoned track into service on the Bayerish branch in the past couple of years. But ever since it was abandoned, like I said, now it's used by freight line company called New York Atlantic Railway. And from here, we're going to find out the history of it. So there you see uh, that the Bayridge branch is a rail line owned by the Long Island Railroad and operated by the New York Atlantic Railway in the city. It is the longest freight only line of the railroad, Long Island, connecting the Monsau branch and CSX Transportation Fremont Secondary, which is the link to the Hellgate Bridge, which is at Glendale, Queens, with the upper New York Bay at Bay Ridge, Brooklyn. So there is a car float service provided by the New York, New Jersey Rail that operates between Greenville Yard at Greenville, Jersey City and the 65th Street Yard at the Bay Ridge end of the line. As you guys know, when we, when we did, I believe that had to be part three. I remember that was in June, that was in the summer. That we showed you guys the yard, the 65th Street Yard, and you were able to see how it looked in real life. So it actually looks really awesome. Uh, you just have a lot of freight going on over there. And actually, in fact, when we were there, we were able to see, I believe it was one of the old, the recent uh, SME trains that got retired. I think it was the R32. I believe we saw it there at that time when we went for the third part of the IBX track series. All right, so. In terms of the overview, let's just go over that real quick, even though that's just uh, telling you everything in a nutshell. But at the moment, there you see it. It is active, and the owner is Long Island Railroad. Uh, it is located between the boroughs of Brooklyn and Queens. Uh, the terminus is at 65th Street Yard, and on the opposite side of things, it would be Fresh Pond Junction. And there you see, in terms of the stations, 17, all former stations, there is no station that looks i don't want to say intact but there you will not find any station that kind of looks like richmond hill the only abandoned station i believe in new york city that still has like the foundation to it and could still pull it off to come back into service at any point it's honestly richmond hill unless i'm proven wrong but i have been noticing that richmond hill is that station that you you have the platform still there you, you still have the canopy that's still there and I believe you also have a staircase that's there the only thing that they did was that they closed out that entrance at that station of course you know why to avoid vandalism and to avoid people from going up there but of course you will have people figuring out ways to get there and I actually do know how to get there in fact when I visited the last time when I went there so at the moment the service type is freight once again, Long Island Railroad is a system operators New York and Atlantic Railway. There it says open 1876. It was completed seven years later, so look at that. So you're telling me that back in the days they were able to get this done within seven years. But how long will it take for them to do this if they get the job done on the IBX? So who, long, who knows how long will that take? And not just that, we also have to worry about how much it's going to be. That's, that's another thing that we have to also keep in mind. And sadly, uh, passenger service did end on 1924. Not a surprise and not a coincidence because also around that time, if we refer to American history, we were approaching uh, not only, of course, the wars that was going on, the World War, but as well as the Great Depression. And I believe I could definitely say that because of the Great Depression, it led to a collapse and a lot of the things that were going on in the U.S. crashed because of what occurred at that time although service ended in 1924 it's safe to say that electrification was installed three years later which is odd i don't know why they would do that and then it was removed in 1968 so that's really interesting now in terms of the tracks it is one to four tracks but you will notice that in certain portions of the corridor it will be as not, not wide but it'll be as narrow to fit only one track or only one track is able to be seen within certain portions of the corridor but don't get me wrong uh, when you pass through bridges you will see up to three to four tracks so that's how interesting how this could get in terms of the track gauge i don't really need to look at that 
But now let's get on to the early history. So the first part of the line was opened by the New York Bay Ridge and Jamaica Railroad in 1876. So this is really interesting because this is something that I'm going to keep referring and referring and referring when I go to Google Earth. So let's might as well visit that real quickly. So what this practically was, was a branch that was part of the Long Island Railroad, if you guys didn't know that. So it was called the Manhattan Beach Branch, and not a surprise, the terminus was at Manhattan Breach, which is in uh, the southern part of Brooklyn. And what's interesting here is that it opened in 1877 and in 1878. Uh, another thing to note is that the tracks from Flatbush South to Manhattan Beach were removed from 1938 to 1941. Um, and the rest of it is, of course, now part of the Bay Ridge Branch. There it says at Manhattan Beach, the line extended east to Oriental Beach and a branch of the Sheepshead Bay Race Track was provided north of Sheepshead Bay. So that's definitely really interesting. Planning for a line to Bay Ridge began in 1870 by the New York and Hempstead Plains Railroad. By 1873, the line was to run from Bay Ridge to East New York, where it would join the LIRR's Atlantic Avenue Division to Jamaica. Uh, the panic of 1873 struck after much work had been done in grading the new line. So I'm not going to really go over all of this, but I could definitely tell you right now, you will see a lot of the Kings County Central Railroad in this you will see, obviously, the Manhattan Beach branch that was part of this. Now, to give you a glimpse of where it ran, so it was actually here where it started. It was actually over here where it started, and it ended once again around Manhattan Beach, around this area, which is now, from what I assume, again, correct me if I'm wrong, but this has to be where today you have a university. You have Kingsborough Community College, which is now around here. Uh, that would have been really cool if that was actually in service. But it's safe to say now that the bus line that covers that area, and I can tell you this because I have experience because I definitely know my stuff. It is safe to say that it is the B49 that is the key contributor to what is that route today so what used to be the manhattan beach branch going towards manhattan beach now is served by the b49 and of course you do have the b1 the problem is the b1 it goes not in that whole direction it goes another way around the b1 i think it starts in bay ridge so that's not even close to this but i can assure you the b49 is now what is the manhattan bridge branch of the years back so there you have it um so let's go back there you go. And now, from Bay Ridge to the crossing of the Brooklyn, Bath, and Coney Island Railroad near New Utrecht, like how my, like how the caravan says it. Because the thing is, Utrecht is, has, the roots of that word is Dutch. And as you guys know, there are a lot of street names that is based off of Netherlands, the Dutch, Holland. Um, a good example is Decalb. A good uh, another example is Stuyvesant. That's another Dutch name. Uh, I believe not the bridge because Kosciuszko. I think that's Polish. But there is definitely a lot of street names that are named after the Dutch, because th those were the the people that settled here in New York City first. So we do have to cover this slightly too, because there are there is a certain portion of the Bay Ridge branch that used to be handled by this by this former line which was called the brooklyn bath and coney island railroad west end line so it was a surface transit line in brooklyn uh of course brooklyn new york running along new utrecht avenue and other streets between coney island and sunset park built by the brooklyn bath and coney island railroad as a steam line it also became a trolley line along which elevated trains until the new elevated bmt west end line opened this route is unfortunately no longer part of any bus line its southern part was part of a bus route which was the 64 but then it was replaced i'm sorry which replaced the 86th street line trolleys until 2010 and after that the b64 route to coney island actually became restored once again so there you have it. On that specific line, there were 20 stations. It was a trolley service. It was in existence from 1862 until 1963. 19, I'm sorry, 1916. 
you had a total of three tracks and it was elevated at 36th Street Terminal and and ran on surface level after ramp down to ground. So there you have it. And that actually was the powerhouse of what used to be part of that line. And here were the stations that were associated off that. I definitely could assure you I am familiar with all these neighborhoods. Sunset Park, Borough Park, Bensonhurst, Graves and Bath Beach, Coney Island, and as well as Coney Island. Right there. So there you have it. An extension from New Utrecht East and Northeast to... New lots opened in 1877. At the same time, the New York and Manhattan Beach Railway opened the line from new lots to East New York. So let me see if that is the same thing that we were... Okay, so that was the same thing that we were talking about just a couple of minutes back. Uh, an extension... Oops. An extension north from East New York to Cooper Avenue and then northwest to Greenpoint, later the Evergreen Branch, which I think was a junction in, in the Bayridge Branch. They call it the Evergreen Junction. The Evergreen Branch Junction, well, that was opened in 1878, and the Long Island City and Manhattan Beach Railroad incorporated in February 24th in 1883, merged with the New York and Manhattan Beach and New York Bay Ridge and Jamaica into the New York, Brooklyn and Manhattan Beach Railway in August 27, 1885, built from Cooper Avenue north to the Montauk Ranch at Galendo in 1883 now of course nothing lasts forever and that is why you will always have a decline to everything and there it says it passenger service on the line ended in 1924 once again not a surprise almost towards the great depression here in the u.s so the entire line was electrified at, uh, starting on july 8th 1927 which became afterwards the new york new haven and hartford railroad freight trains coming off the near connecting railroad at the hellgate bridge so oh, okay so that's why it became operated because of the fact that you had trains that were coming from or that were using that portion for the hellgate line however as it, as it says there uh, electric operation ended on december 31st 1968 all right so now we have to talk about the recent years so in on june 4th 1999 at the time the mayor was rudy giuliani who announced that New York City reached an agreement to open and operate the 65th Street Yard. If we could just make a glimpse of it real quick once again, that is how the 65th Street Yard looks once again. They definitely have a lot of tracks there. And like I said, when I was there, in one of the tracks, they did have the R32 there, which was something really interesting to see. Uh, with the New York and Atlantic Railway, which would use it as an intermodal facility to expand its customer base. Uh, the takeover of Conrail by Northern Suffolk Railway and CSX Transportation was expected to significantly increase rail freight movement into the city. Uh, the yard was completely renovated by the New York City Economic Development Corporation. The NYCEDC also began work on a two-year cross-harbor freight movement study to evaluate options for a freight tunnel. Alright, so what's interesting here in these two pictures is first of all, when we did part three, we definitely did show you this part because if anything, a lot of people, and I, I can't, I wouldn't lie, and I don't blame them for going here because this, in fact, is actually a really good location to, you know, to take pictures, to do rail fanning. That actually, so I'll tell you this, once IBX is in service, right, this definitely is going to be an awesome location to rail fan because you're going to be getting the subway on the left and then what would be the light rail on the right, like I said, if, if it gets done. But we did show this part when we did part three of the Bad and Track series for the IBX. And we did catch some couple of entries coming in and out on both sides, both directions. And a good thing about this section of the track is that you have three tracks. So that's definitely really good. The question is, and in which they're trying to decipher the IBX, is that what will happen Will one of those tracks become for freight rail and then the rest for light rail? That, I believe, is going to be the case. That, I believe, is going to be the case. And on the right-hand side, this is when the track elevates. And I could assure you right now, the track actually elevates once the track passes Albany Avenue. So once the track passes Albany Avenue, it goes up in an embankment. And as you see there, there is where you could see it become uh, in an embankment. And that bridge is actually on Ralph Avenue. In fact, when we did part four, we did show two uh, two locations in which you could see the, the the tracks put on the bridge. The first one was at Utica Avenue. And so it was at Utica and Farragut Road. And then in the next one, it was on Kings Highway and Farragut Road instead and us as well. 
and we were able to see it and judging off of how wide the bridge was when we were walking through it so the thing is this the wider the bridge that should also tell you that there must be a lot of tracks in that bridge so we could definitely assure that when we went to those two locations the bridge was definitely wide and once again like i said you more than likely had three to four tracks that were part of that bridge all right so for the proposals there it says a proposed cross harbor rail tunnel from new jersey to brooklyn would use the bay ridge branch to reach the rest of long island with the line upgraded to double stack clearances the state is conducting an environmental review of the project you never know that could happen that would be awesome if if that happens because if anything that would be really good especially for brooklynites that live in that specific section of brooklyn so like i said like sunset well, Bay Ridge, to better put it, Bay Ridge and Sunset Park. To get to Long Island, mind you, for those people to get to Long Island, you would have to take the R to Barclay Center and then take the Long Island Railroad. And then not just that, the train will take you, but you have to get off at Jamaica and then take another train to go to Long Island. So a good thing here is, what if this Cross Harbor Rail Tunnel, what if that tunnel, once you go on it, it will lead you straight to Long Island? That would honestly be really cool. But my question is, where in Long Island would that go to? And let's just see real quick where that would go to, if anything. Also, in fact, I don't know why they said Long Island if it says here New Jersey. So let's see. Okay, so here it is, Bay Ridge. And if it continues, also that will be New Jersey. That, that also will be pretty good. If it goes to New Jersey, because that will also increase um, transportation between New Jersey and New York. Not only will it usually be the typical thing from New Jersey to Manhattan, but if you could create a link from New Jersey to Brooklyn, that would definitely be really cool. I think I would be down for this. But my doubts about this is that if they were to get this done, I would probably say right now it would only be a shuttle service because I don't think they would honestly create stations there if anything look i'll probably say just build like two stations but again i don't think this is gonna happen anyways but i do like the inspiration that they're showing here by bringing this up and now after that uh there says another proposal what happens the new york city subway use the tracks to link brooklyn queens and the bronx via the hellgate bridge that's not happening it is not. There it says in 1996, the RPA conducted a study to determine the feasibility of the rail link. Uh, based on Paris's RER, commuter rail system, the Triborough RX proposal will create a loop around the city. It was first proposed by the RPA in 1996, a year after I was born, in fact. The proposed line discussion of which was revived in 2012, which would connect to all non-shuttle subway services. Obstacles for the proposal include the proposed Cross Harbor Rail Tunnel, the lack of electrification on the line, and the single tracking in some parts of the line. So that's the challenge right there. Additionally, there is debate on where the line's northern terminus would be. Some, including Move New York, which I think was the company that was pushing for this, uh, called it to end at Hunts Point. Definitely not a good idea. I wouldn't want a line like that to end in a ghetto like Hunts Point. Again, I have to say it like that because honestly, there you can't sugarcoat. You can't say and you can't assume that that's a good area. It's not really. Unless the folks that are watching this video that live in Hunts Point could prove me wrong. But again, from what I heard, from what I heard, based off of videos, newspaper articles, uh, people in the streets, they definitely say Hunts Point is not a place you want to be, especially at night. I would definitely suggest that it ended at Yankee Stadium because, if anything, that is an icon, obviously, especially for those that are from the Bronx or live in the Bronx. You definitely know how important Yankee Stadium is for the folks that grew up or, or were born there. Um, it would be awesome because, if anything, the line will connect you, what, to the 4, uh, to the to the B, to the D, to the Metro North Hudson line. That would be awesome if that happened, but the thing is that's not going to happen. And now getting to a more realistic approach, which is something that, like I said, I've been covering nonstop, 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 is the IBX, as you see here. So this is realistic. Enter Borough Ex Express. This is realistic because, remember, the, the feasibility study was done. Uh, the environmental study was also done. But you know what? Let's try to read this so that I don't go off tangent again. 
Uh, in mid October 2019, the MTA announced that it would study the feasibility of restoring passenger service on the Barry branch between Bay Ridge and Astoria, a portion of the proposed Triborough RX route. So on January 23, 2020, during the pandemic, the board of the AMT awarded a $1.3 million contract to study the feasibility of restoring passenger service of this section to ACOM, which is, I think, an engineering company. It has to be an engineering company. In November of 2021, acting, chair, acting MTA Chairman and CEO General Lieber said that the money from Infrastructure Investments and Jobs Act could be used to fund the completion of the Bay Ridge Branch Project. So that's definitely awesome. So the money is there. Remember, the money is there. So now you can give the excuse of, oh, well, um, we can't get this done because, of course, the money is always the excuse that you can't get anything done here in New York City. No, the money is here. The money is here. And if the money is there, then... They do the project. Do it. Do it because how amazing would that be? Especially for the folks that live in, in those transit deserts. For example, uh, Flatlands, uh, uh, F East Flatbush, Canarsie, Bushwick, Ridgewood, Maspeth, you name it, Glendale. All those areas that have absolutely zip of transit. Who, again, I feel really bad for, I guess, for those folks that live around there. You got to have a car. Because to do that walk to a nearest bus or to a nearest train, that, that, that is long. And I'm pretty sure at a certain point, people will be fat up and rather just get a car, like what I'm saying right now. So, again, how important would it be if they actually pull it off? And in early January 2022, as part of her State of the State address, they're referring to the governor, Kathy Hochul, who in that State of the State address announced that the state would move forward with the Bay Ridge Branch Line by conducting an environmental review study on the IBX, which would be a 14-mile, 23 kilometers for the Europeans who are watching. So a 14-mile corridor using the existing Bay Ridge Branch uh, from Bay Ridge, Brooklyn to Jackson Heights, Queens. How massive would that be? For example, let's say for me, if I want to go to a future Mets game, I could just take this and then once I get at Jackson Heights, just take the 7 and boom, I'll be in I'll be in City Field. And not just that, if I want to go uh, to get something in the bakery, Col Colombian bakery, or if I want to try out the foods around there, or if I want to go to Flushing to have Korean food or whatever the case may be, Chinese or whatever the case may be, whatever it is. IPX will definitely help me out. It definitely will. Because look, what would be an hour and a couple of minutes of of a commute will be just 30, 30 to 40 minutes, I can guarantee you, depending on how fast this would go. So the study would consider whether the line should be heavy rail, rapid transit, or regional rail, light rail, or bus rapid transit. Obviously, we know what's the answer to that. It's going to be a light rail. End-to-end uh, -end travel times are expected to be 40 minutes, and weekday ridership is initially projected to be 74000 to 88000 But, of course, according to that analysis that I did in the feasibility study, which, again, I always insist that it's important that you guys check that out so you guys get a better insight of what to expect about the line. Remember, according to that graphic, I remember it was supposed to be 35 to 40 minutes it was supposed to be shorter in the in a sense although five minutes is doesn't make a difference but again to, to some people it does so it was supposed to be 35 to 40 minutes and it was supposed to be around 85 to 87 thousand for a ridership so that definitely is still good regardless so the route would connect up to 17 subway lines and as well as the long island railroad where you're wondering it would connect with the Long Island Railroad. It will connect at the East New York station because they're definitely planning to still use that abandoned train station that was part of the Bay Ridge branch, which is East New York. That's what it was called. And turn that into an IBX stop. Uh, the good thing about that is if you get off, you just have to walk a couple of, a couple of blocks down and you will have the Jamaica shuttle of the Long Island Railroad. Uh, a feasibility... Study was also completed in January 2022. Governor Hoko also announced that she had directed the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey to complete an environmental review for the Cross Harbor ra uh, Rail Tunnel for freight. That's definitely interesting. Again, I believe that tunnel should be more used for freight, for business. I, I definitely think that would be a win-win. And for someone like Hoko who will try to find any way to get elected again for New York State, I'm pretty sure. She wouldn't be stupid. She probably would say, hey, you know what? Let me do this so that I could get the votes. 
Because look, I can assure you, once she said IBX is happening, she she won because of that. And again, politician, to be a politician, you have to also be smart on what you do. So that is why she probably became governor. Again, because of what occurred here with the decision of the IBX. So the so Hoko announced in her January 2023 address that the project would proceed as a light rail corridor. Reasons for the light rail choice include faster service, easier construction, mostly fitting in an existing ROW right away, with the short on street segment availability of the off-the-shelf rolling stock and a lower overall cost is estimated at a 5.5 billion dollars, or about 48 thousand per expected daily rider. Proposed headway would be 5 minutes peak and 10 minutes at other times. Freight use would continue requiring separated tracks. So there you have it. What I was referring to, especially when we went up and showed this part. There will be certain portions where there's going to be a lot of tracks. Like I said, I, I'll, I guarantee you that there's going to be one track that will at least be used by, by freight. And again, the major challenges that go on here for the IBX in the future is uh, the whole concept of battling the NIMBYism. Like what my good viewer in Believer Edwards, if you guys have been noticing who comments in the posts and of course in transit update videos or any other videos. He, he definitely has brought it up uh, multiple times. Not just him, more viewers have brought it up where they say that this is a major problem the whole thing about the nimbyism and uh, for those that don't know what that is is the non not in my backyards so it's those kind of people it's those people that don't want anything done who are the uppity snobby arrogant the think that they own the block or they own the whole neighborhood be just because they have a nice looking house and if they find out something is being built around the area they'll say hey you know what no 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 i don't want that I don't want that because that's going to look and they'll give you so much excuses. They're going to say, oh, well, now taxes will go up. I'm going to have to pay more for the property, uh, property tax. Uh, it's going to be more noise in my area. It's going to ruin my quiet life. Look, those people will come up with so much excuses. And mind you, it's also those same people that are really annoying. And there, I think that is also the reason why, if you guys have been wondering, the lower Montauk branch, because there was a. Uh, a proposal for that to be reinstated and it was supposed to be a a light rail system that they were supposed to build but the thing is you know why it failed it was because of that it was because of nimbyism so that definitely will be a challenge and like i said when it comes down to them building the stations right they're gonna have to make sure it is adjacent to an existing train station because that is how it's gonna work if you're gonna build a train station right that it is surrounded by a residential neighborhood. All I'm saying right now is it's not going to work. It's going to fail. And those people are going to go to the MTA. Who are those people? The NIMBYs. Exactly what I'm talking about. All right. So this does it for this part. Because we do have a couple of more stuff to show you. But here were uh, the former stations. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that there are some stations that were only used for a little bit. And then they were closed down. I guess either a year later or a couple of years later. So the ones that were only open for a couple of years, you will see it. But I'm going to go over all of them as you see here. Uh, so the first one was Bay Ridge, opened in 19, 1893, closed in 1924 on May 14. Uh, the station after that was 3rd Avenue, opened on June the 2nd, 1883, closed on the same day as the first the station after that was the Brooklyn Bath and Coney Island Railroad Crossing, which again, the rights of that station used to be part of that railroad that we explained earlier. But then afterwards, it became part of the Bayridge branch. So that station was opened on June the 2nd, 1883, closed uh, 11 years later. After that, the station was Parkville, opened the same year as this one, and it was closed 10 years earlier than that one. After that, you got Manhattan Beach Junction, which in fact, again, Based on where I've located it in Google Earth, I hope I'm right about that. I honestly hope so. But if anything, when we did that first ever, ever location in that abandoned track, abandoned track series, that whole time that we were showing where that abandoned track was, there used to be a station there. And no wonder you had the retaining wall there. Because I was looking at it and I was like, wait a minute, is it, that looked like that could have been part of a station because of the way it looked and all. So it actually was, but 
we will get to that once we get to that specific portion of the video, which unfortunately will be the last part. So Manhattan Beach Junction opened in 1884, closed in 1915. Of course, it was the former junction with the Manhattan Beach branch, which was the one that I showed uh, earlier. After that is Ocean Avenue, opened uh, July 18, 1877, closed in May 14, 1924. After that, Kings County Central Junction. So if you guys know, um, we call it Brooklyn, but when you vote, right, or when you refer to like the state and you refer... Uh, things by county Brooklyn is actually called Kings County so that's just one thing I want to spit it out for the viewers to know so Brooklyn is actually called Kings County and Staten Island is actually called Richmond County this is something I want the viewers to know so that station uh was only <laughs> open for just a couple of months there you see June 29 1878 and then it closed I guess the the stud the winter of that year uh Vanderveer Park opened in 1878 closed in May 14, 1924, it was actually renamed, or it was originally named, Flatlands. So, it's definitely devastating. I think when May 14 comes on this channel, we're going to call it the devastating day for the Bay Ridge branch. Uh, or, or for the folks that like the Bay Ridge branch. I'm going to, on that day, I'm going to post a sad, sad day for, for, for May 14. Because this was when most of the stations on the Bay Ridge branch closed down. So, definitely, that will be a date. That will be polarizing because people are going to wonder why why are you mentioning that because that was the date when most of the stations here closed so after uh van der veer park which actually in fact van der veer that's dutch that's dutch van der veer that's dutch and the word after that cohen hoven that's definitely dutch as well so this is what i was talking about most of the street names and most of i guess the station names that they refer to at the bayridge branch come from origin of the netherlands uh, the Cohen Halvin station was opened July 18, 1877, closed on that day, May 14. Rugby was opened 1888, uh, closed in May 14, 1924. It actually well, used to be called Fort's Corners. Look at that. Uh, after that, New Lots Road uh, opened July 18, 1877, closed uh, 20 years later, 1897. East New York. East New York. Which I would definitely say right now. I think I was wrong what I was saying with uh, if there is any station that still even has a might to have some reactivation. East New York probably will get that award because you still could see the existing platform that used to be part of that station. You can actually if you were to go there today. The only danger is to get there. Oh boy, you have to be really, really brave. I, I know some people that have gone there. And I did comment on a video that I saw once where there were folks that were crossing through there, like hanging out and then showing that. Which again, I won't lie, I have to admit, it's cool, but like I said, it's dangerous because first of all, if you get caught, it's over. At least for me, if if they catch me, I'll just say, hey, you know what, I was just really curious, you know, I, I, I was studying about the history of this. And then, you know what, I just decided to uh, go on here and just check it out. But if it honestly is illegal to do that, I'm sorry about that. Again. If I were to get caught, then I'll just say that. I'll just be brutally honest with the police if I were ever going to get stopped. The plan is not to do that because I don't want to, but if that were to happen. So eighteen July 18th when it opened, 1877, closed in May 14, 1924. It was a uh, junction with the Atlantic branch, as you see in this picture. The Atlantic branch started in Brooklyn, Atlantic Avenue, Flappish Avenue, and then it goes down towards Valley Stream. So it was originally named Manhattan Crossing. Now after that you got Folsom Street, opened 1914, closed that date. You got Bushwick Avenue, uh, opened July 18, 1877, uh, closed that date. It was originally called Central Avenue. And then after that is Central Avenue, which was opened in June 2, 1883, closed the year after that. So it was kind of a pointless station. Cooper Avenue Junction, that was also, you could say right now, another pointless station, uh, uh, only in existence for 11 years. Uh, it was in junction with the Evergreen Branch, as you see there. Cypress Avenue opened in 1888, closed on that date as well. It was originally actually named Dummy Crossing and then after that Ridgewood. Then you have Myrtle Avenue, which in fact, Myrtle Avenue, once I show it on Google Earth, you could still see the platform. That used to be at that station. Uh, opened in 1893, closed May 14, 1924 at the intersection with Fresh Pond Road. Track continues north as the New York Connecting Railroad and connects west slash east 
to the lower Montauk Ranch. And the last one, Fresh Pond. As you guys know, that is a, a definite interesting area because, first of all, around there you have a lot of free action. And as well as the terminus of the M-Line. And not just that, you also have the Fresh Pond Yard that's there too. Uh, that station was opened 1869, and in fact, look at that. That was a station that was closed recently. Look at that. It was closed in 1998. So no wonder you still see like some remnants of that station. You can still see that uh, overpass that is abandoned now, of course, because there you could definitely say, see that it says stairs closed. So in fact, I didn't actually pay attention to that. So that's interesting. Out of all the stations that were part of the Bayridge Branch. It was Fresh Pond that was closed the latest. And in fact, for the folks, if you want to visit that station, it's between um, it's between Metropolitan and Fresh Pond Road. Because I did actually check this out, and you guys will laugh when 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 I tell you this, but I, I spent like almost three hours figuring out what were the locations of all these stations. Even though you could definitely say. You will not see some of these stations on Google Earth because of the fact that they only existed for a certain amount of time, which makes no sense. And it'll be pointless for me to put that on the map because it would cause a lot of, you know, inconveniences and confusion too. So I don't want that to be the case. So there you have it. That was uh, this page. It was a lot that we covered. Uh, certainly you could tell right now that there is a lot of history that covered the Bay Ridge branch. A lot of history. You, you, you notice that in some of the stations, were actually controlled by other individual railroads. So, like, I, like what was mentioned uh, for Manhattan Beach Junction, that actually was part of the Manhattan Beach branch. Same goes for Parkville, which was owned by the Prospect Park and Coney Island Railroad. Same goes for the Brooklyn Bath and Coney Island Railroad Crossing, that was part of the Brooklyn Bath and Coney Island Railroad. So, they have a lot of connections with this. And like I said. Opened in 1876, and unfortunately, it stopped at 1924. So if we were to do the math, so what is that? T uh, 20, 24, uh, th that would be 48 years. Look at that. So that, yeah, so it's 20, and then you add 4, and then 24. Yeah. So 48 years in service, Bay Ridge Branch, 48 years. Well, actually, in fact, there it says completed. So I think we should sub subtract that and... If we were to subtract that, that would be uh, 41, 41 years in service because I will count where it says completed. So it'll be 41 years in service. So that's definitely quite interesting. And in terms of uh, the stations, 17. But again, I was only able to do 15 because those 15 that I were able to find, those are accurate and ones that stayed for a longer time. Uh, here would be the future of the IBX. Obviously, it would start in that yard that we once again showed here, uh, 65th Street Yard. The catch to this is that it wouldn't end at Fresh Pond Junction. It would, in fact, end at Jackson Heights, like what is mentioned over here. It would actually end there. So that would be incredible if that were to happen. Just a quick water break there. So, in this page... You'll find a contrast in terms of the station names. The reason why I'm saying that is there are a lot of stations that are on this page that you didn't see in the previous part. And in fact, what Wikipedia did was that once you notice that it it showed us the section of the former stations, you did see a footnote that said 26. So when I refer to that, it led to this website and of course this gives you more information so in terms of the stations right these first four are as is no changes whatsoever bay ridge and in fact what's also really cool about this website is that they give you the locations of these stations so for example when i was going through this i actually appreciated this because i was like wow they actually show the locations I'm, I'm i'm glad that they did that so they gave the locations for bay ridge uh, for Parkville, they show the location. Uh, Manhattan Beach Junction, they included that location, which is cool. Same for this one, uh, Kings County Central Junction. Same goes for Flatlands. Same goes for Cohen Halvin. Same goes for Rugby. Uh, East New York as well. Let's see. Originally, the Fresh Pond. No, they didn't show the location for that. For Maspeth, they did. 
they did because look here's they here they show you that the problem that i have with this is that once it goes past bushwood junction these stations are not relevant to the bay ridge branch because those stations are the lower montauk branch so i didn't pay attention to that so here what i'm just showing here is another another site in which you can find more information about uh the stations when it was open and when it was closed but here we can definitely tell you right now uh there were a couple of modifications why am i saying that is because in the other page it was ford's corner right it actually is called rugby well actually in fact that's not the one that i'm talking about the one that i was referring to is ridgewood because on that page they referred it to as cypress avenue here they referred more as ridgewood station and what they refer to Fresh Pond, which was that last stop that, I, that we showed there for the Bay Ridge Branch, they actually referred here to Bushwick Junction. So that's something definitely interesting to note. Now, in terms of pictures, I don't necessarily, I wouldn't refer to any of these except for maybe this one. And uh, hopefully we can even see it. So there you have it. This is going to be the only picture in which I could provide a connection to because uh, in this picture this shows you the abandoned East New York tunnel so once the Bay Ridge train Bay Ridge branch train left East New York station towards north it would go over this tunnel it would go over the East New York tunnel how many tracks you're wondering if I had a guess right now it probably was two to three unless I'm wrong but we will figure that out once we get to Google Earth all right, so now let's go to uh, this page here. So let's see how much. Uh, okay, so we got two more because this one is just pictures where it says NYA, like the blur. That's just pictures, and the last one is more of like pictures and then analysis. This is actually a really good site. That last one, and there's a catch to that website too, which I'll refer to in a bit. But here in this website, they just show you like the insane old like dinosaur age pictures and of course history of what used to be. Uh, the Bay Ridge brand. So that used to be the logo. There you have it. That's the old Long Island Railroad logo. Which, don't get me wrong, that looks pretty cool. Don't get me wrong. Pretty cool. So here you have uh, pictures. There it says Bay Ridge NYCTA connection. Right here. Over here, it says the branch connection at Fresh Pond. 1994 track profile map. On the extreme right, there it says uh, Bay Ridge excavation. So look at that. And here, what they're referring to is the miles uh, from Long Island City on both timetables. So look at that. So it'll be 4.4 from Fresh Pond, uh, Myrtle Avenue 5.1, Cypress 5.5, Bushwick 6.5, East New York 7, Rugby 9.2, Cohen Haven 10.2, uh, Vanderveer Park 11.4, Manhattan Beach Junction 12.0. So here's the catch. I didn't see this. Here they're saying that it's Ocean Avenue, Manhattan Beach Junction, but I referred it to what I saw on uh, the Manhattan Beach branch because apparently that station started there at that station of Avenue H. But here they're saying it's Ocean Avenue, so I don't know. I don't know what to make of it. And here eventually, uh, these stops that you see here, right? I believe it's these that are highlighted. That actually, in fact, used to be part of the Manhattan Beach branch that used to exist for the Long Island Railroad. And in fact, if you guys want to be curious, right? If you go to Neck Road, right? Neck Road Station on the queue. There is like a abandoned entrance, even though it looks so so weird and out of place. But that, that staircase, right? That you see around that station. That actually was part of the Manhattan Beach branch of Long Island Railroad. And in fact, I will go there one day and show you guys what I'm talking about. But here, what they're showing is just, like I said, extremely old pictures. Uh, what they're showing here is just designs of uh, the track. There says Montauk Ranch, uh, Myrtle Avenue, Cooper Avenue, towards uh, the East New York Tunnel portal. So these are just like the engineering uh, diagrams. This is definitely not a schematic diagram. This is just like a blueprint showing you of like what the, the track consisted of. Uh, here you have pictures of, um, what is that, uh, N52, don't know what that is. Here you see uh, the uh, a locomotive that is carrying what was the new R12 subway cars. Again, at that time, the R12 was a hit. But of course, today, that's basically ancient history. 
uh, over here, this is a good example of where, once again, they do certify that the Bay Ridge branch is still in service, but like I said, it's owned by the NYNAR. And this is a picture of that locomotive that passes by. And in fact, I actually saw this pass by when I was... I was doing something, I was walking somewhere, and then I heard a huge noise, and then I found that that was coming by, and then I, I took a video, but the thing is, I still can't find that video. I think I honestly got rid of it for good, which sucks, but just know that I also saw it too. Uh, here you have more pictures, uh, Bushwick Station, there it says Glenmore Avenue, uh, here it says uh, Coaling Station Archive, very interesting, this picture here, really cool. Relocated south of Glenmore Avenue. More pictures here. You see the East New York Tunnel port, port, um, portal towards Liberty Avenue. So that, it's safe to say that used to be the portion of uh, East New York in Brooklyn. And um, what they're showing you there is the abandoned East New York Passenger Station. And not just that. The Long Island River Atlantic Avenue line crossing. So that's cool. Uh, there it says, well, what they're showing here. Is just information of what these pictures are about now interesting enough here it says 1924 would be the proper closure date because pro because passenger service was to Manha uh, Manhattan Beach only utilizing what we know as the bearish branch of Manhattan Beach Junction the joint branch at that time and the MJ Tower then heading south on its own trackage Manhattan Beach branch only to Sheepshead Bay and Manhattan Beach Passenger service to Manhattan Beach ended in 1924. Of course, we went over that, so I don't want to repeat myself. Uh, the iconic picture that you have been seeing in IBX videos that I do is that picture that I'm showing right now, this picture, where you see the portal of the East New York Tunnel. So there you have it. That's how it looks, or that's how it looked back in the days. There you see in 1914. I'm sorry, 1924. And that's how it looks right now at the moment. Here you can see, uh, there it says, under the signal still evident is the 1914 bill day. So there you see it, Long Island Railroad. Uh, ev I don't know what it says there. All I, all I see is crossing, great crossing, eliminations. So there you have it. That is the example of the old uh, signal that you saw there at the time. Here are just maps showing you <laughs> East New York on the Long Island Railroad and Manhattan Beach crossing. There you see it. Uh, this is an older map, and then uh, this one is a more recent. Well, I don't want to say really recent. So real quick, just want to check how the Mets doing, because right now the Mets are actually playing on the scene. Oh, okay, so they're taking the lead, so that's really good. Sorry for the interruption. Just want to check the score. But like I said, um, the picture in the left that was East New York in the late 1800s and then this was east new york in the early 1900s this picture here is the brooklyn queens Atlantic division map really cool look at that probably had to be long island railroad and of course a mix of subway there but since it says long island railroad there i'm just gonna leave it at that uh this is what used to be the east new york depot there you see it for the manhattan beach branch that was the tower for the east new york there you see it uh this was a depot valuation photo again that's that's what they're referring to there uh here a picture of the east new york station layout 1907 that is the no tower atlantic branch east new york mind you a lot of hmm, east new york is on this so you, de it, you definitely could be assured that east new york has a lot of history for the for the bay ridge branch uh this is a postcard from 1912 showing the nymb depot in the left now, these are how the tickets used to look for Long Island Railroad. Uh, in the top, it says ferry ticket. There it says Long Island City to East New York. That one says the opposite way around. And uh, that's another example of a ticket. Here are more pictures. Uh, this here is the No Tower Gray Crossing. There you see it. That's the picture of it. Here you can see uh, the Gray Crossing elimination. There at Atlantic Avenue. There you see it in 1915. Over here, there is the express house. These two pictures that are not with color, there you see it, are pictures of East New York in 1916 and this one in 1922. So you do note some changes there. You could you, you could see the changes little by little. Uh, that picture is the uh, a train that is passing the N.O. Tower. There you see it. 
more pictures of mind you look at all of this all these pictures are practically is new york over here you have it right there this is a a blueprint of i guess the, the layout of the track or the street that is how the station looked in 1938 really cool over here as well this is how the station looked in 1941 and in fact once again back in the days which obviously this is now long island river right now but before that even though it was still Long Island River, but you had a great crossing there, in fact. And there are more pictures. Look at that. This is from 1941 of the station. Here you can see that's another view of it. And here you have more pictures. These are just layouts of what used to be the stations. This one is the former Ford's Corners. There you have it. That was the layout of the station. Um, over here, that's Vanderveer Park. So over here, Cohen Hoban, Rockaway Avenue, Sutter. I think that what they're referring to there is uh, the L train. All right. Uh, over here, they're referring to um, Manhattan Beach Junction. These two pictures. Uh, this one, I don't know. Oh, this one is also Manhattan Beach Junction. Over here, that's the Bedford Tower. Uh, these two pictures, I didn't go over over here. That is the Bay Ridge Branch view of... Oh, the Vanderveer Coal, which is at the left side. There you can see a coal. Um, this is the picture of Vanderveer Park Station, of course. Uh, around my area, Flatbush Avenue and East 32nd. Or the area that I used to live, at least. But a good chunk of my life, I was around that area. So I definitely know a lot about that. But what I didn't know was that there used to be a station that used to be called Vanderveer Park. Which was served by the Long Island Railroad's uh, Bay Ridge Branch back in the days. Here is a picture of Ocean Avenue in Brooklyn. And I definitely could assure you this is the same Ocean Avenue that I showed in the part one of the Abandoned Track series when I did it back in, um, what was that, 2022? I think so. And here are just more pictures. That's Parkville Station, part of the Bearish Branch. Uh, this is Parkville Station 2. So I think what they're doing here is they're showing literally every single station. Because we, we, we saw on top other stations. We saw East New York. And we saw others. Now we're up to um, Parkville. Which is these areas that you see here. So here are pictures. Look at that. All these pictures. Practically uh, layouts of either the station. Or how they uh, planned out the track. It has to be either one of those. Uh, here is the Bay Ridge Branch View. East near new utrecht avenue and in fact this is actually an excursion of the bayridge branch 6th avenue Bay Ridge. look at that so who knows where that was if i had a guess that honestly has to be around the sea beach line there it says 6th avenue so it has to be around there it has to be around there so that's how it looked back in the days really cool you have the locomotive so look that was when uh the bayridge branch was still in service because there look you have the logo m so that definitely has to be the Long Island River operating the, the diesel service. There you see it. Uh, the rest of the pictures that they're showing here are interlockings, uh, layouts, either of the stations or the way they planned it out. Uh, over here, that is uh, the cat. Okay, so that. Don't need to worry about that. Uh, this is the LIWR Tri-State map. Not really paying attention to that. That doesn't really have that much relevance to this. Here you see the East New York Industrial Park service by the Bay Ridge Line in 66. Again, not really into that because that's not part of the Bay Ridge Branch because that was actually after that. That is the New Lost Freight Yard. Look at that. New Lost. That's how New Lost looked back in the days, 1949 to be exact, July 26. Uh, here uh, is a picture from 1999 from Doug Diamond. Who was covering that area from 1958 uh, into the 1920s. There you have it. Uh, what they're providing here is a, a list of industries that used to mark that area. And you do notice it's mostly co coal or steel or scrapping industries. Anything relating to that. Lumber. So anything regarding that. The construction industry, the coal industry, all that. There you see it there. 
And here they just give you explanations of um, industries that were located in uh, Bay Ridge. Here you have uh, ancient pictures, uh, probably uh, taken by a potato camera because <laughs> this thing looks really blurry. But again, uh, credit to who took it because look, in fact, this was from 1974. So these were um, freight trains that were passing by the, the area at the time. And here, what they're going to show is the 60 Pip Street Yard. So this is the layout of the 60 Pip Street Yard in Bay Ridge. So there you have it. Really cool, 64th Street, 60 Pip. So here is where here's where I was. I was around here when I was recording it. So my view was this over here. All of that. Really interesting. Who knows what that is? That kind of looks scary. Who knows what happened to that? Oh, that was a flow bridge. Look at that. So that was a flow bridge. Uh, it was due to the reconstruction of First Avenue, which was isolated, which isolated the 65th Street from the float bridges at Bush Terminal Yard. Uh, this float bridge was utilized until about 1990, uh, when when it was no longer needed and abandoned in place. It has since pulled away from its bulkhead anchors and sits partially submerged a few feet off the bulkhead, where it could still be seen there today. So look at that. That's definitely really cool. And these are pictures of the 65th Street Yard uh, back in the days. So there you see it, 1926. God damn, look at that. This is a, quite a more recent sort of picture from the 80 and 90 era. Uh, this was a picture of a freight train that was passing by in 1968. Here you have uh, more pictures. Uh, that is a Reacher flat car. Don't know what that is. Here are more pictures representing what 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 the Bay Ridge Yard is all about. Uh, in this junction here, here you see New York Atlantic, and then over here it says New York Rail Railroad. And really interesting. Uh, view looking west, obviously you guys did see that when I did the part 3 in the IBX track showcase. This was from 1997 though. Uh, let's see. Here were people uh, expecting, inspecting the new car floats. There you see it. More than likely engineers. Uh, there you see fresh wood paint and ready for freight. Really cool. That's the view looking west. Same exact view where I was standing. Uh, view looking southwest. So if you walk a little down towards that direction, towards the right direction, that is how the view will look. Here you have the double crossover. Really cool. And great that they're able to provide these pictures. Although, like I said, it's super ancient, but... It's always great that they have it, and I think they're they're. It will wrap it up showing, just more pictures of what, the Bay Ridge Yard looked like in the past. Like I said, it was mostly used for freight trains to transport, uh, goods, whatever, whatever the hell they were carrying. The Bay Ridge Ranch was definitely important to that, because look, once it once it arrived, uh, here, from there is a boat. If it had to go to New Jersey or if it had to go to other parts, it was boat in which the goods would be carried from there. Uh, great that they were able to show this. Lots and lots of pictures here where they show just sections of the yard. Um, pictures of, of freight trains just sitting there. And then you have work trains that were there too. Look at that. A work, uh, a locomotive train. Here you can see it too. That's a richer car freight switching the floats. So I guess what what they mean by switching, more than likely switching the track. That, that that definitely looks complex. Look at that. Look at all those tracks linking into each other, and of course the way you uh you make the train go to a specific track is if you move the lever. There's like a lever that is sitting next to the track, and you have to pull it, and you have to make sure that it goes on the track that you want. And it doesn't sound as easy as you think. And um, to wrap it up in this site, here it just shows you pictures of a Long Island Railroad work train that was pulling a M7. So look at that. And this was recent because look, those pictures look great. So, that? so it had to be recent. This picture, that's from 65th Street. Over here, that's Liberty Avenue, which has to be East New York. And then over here, that's Atlantic Avenue. And look, the platform is there. Look. It's right there. You see it? So the platform is still there. And in fact, the same one that I was talking about.
Okay, so from here, it's just um, pictures that I just want to show. There you see it. This is from uh, the Fresh Parn Yard. Here's another one of it. More pictures. Here, what they're just showing here is just uh, freight trains that were sitting down. You're noticing that in one of the cars, they have lumber on it. Let's see the third gallery. Same thing. Uh, number four. Pictures of the current locomotive that you see right now. This one, the New York Atlantic. That's the one that you see right now. And this is a picture of it when it goes past uh, Fresh Pond. That bridge, you actually will also see it in Google Earth too. So that's good. Let's see. Uh, number six. That, I think, has to be a former coach, coach cab. That's how they refer to something like that. That was part of the... Bayer's branch, I have to guess. Uh, here you can see an example of when they were carrying new tech trains up top. And then the bottom, that is just a a, a freight locomotive. Uh, pictures here, that's the East New York Tunnel. Look at that. Awesome that they included the pictures of the East New York Tunnel today. In the first one, you clearly see that the platform is still there. So there you go, intact. The only thing is they have a lot of um <clears throat> nature growing in there. They have a lot of leaves growing in the in the in the platform so that they should, that definitely should give you an indication that they don't take care of the station why would they it's abandoned so why would they bother here are more pictures of when the track uh exits out of the tunnel and goes towards bay ridge those are the pictures here those two here are more pictures uh, i don't know how these people <laughs> got there maybe oh okay so this was probably when there was service yeah Maybe, 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 or if not, I don't think so because look, no, I'm totally wrong on that and I'm ignorant because that was when New York and Atlantic took over. So definitely what they were just doing there, they were just taking pictures and videos. And uh, this picture is a factory and that's the L train. Let's see this one, more pictures of the East New York tunnel. So look, one, two, three, four. So you had four portals in total. Uh, the ones that only had track, though, one, two, one and two, unless three, I think three, more likely three. And this is how uh, the locomotive train looks when it left uh, the portal itself. This is a picture of the former cab number 2940 emerging from the East New York Tunnel. Uh, the New York and Atlantic Railroad will be using this car as an inspection car for the car's life. Really cool. Let's see number four. That's just showing you the nature and when the locomotive left. So what they're showing here is the right of way. Uh, so this was by the end train at 65th Street. So that's really interesting because what they're showing here is a tour that they did. So that's cool. So there, so there were tours that were possibly done back in the days. And this has to be recent because look, you still have those R68s that were on the end at the time. So the tour was going on at the time. Uh, here, what they're showing is um, the 65th Street Yard, the track. Here you go, same thing too. This is the switch, uh, the stuff that I was talking about. Either So when I meant the lever, I'm, I'm just talking about the handle. What I meant to say was the switch. That's what I was talking about, or that's what I referred to say. And here are just pictures of, like I said, 65th Street Yard. Not really going to go over that much because they're just pictures. I really want to waste my time on that. There you have it. Uh, the last part, what does that say? Old what? Oh, so that's back in the past. Yeah, we don't really have to concentrate on that. All right. So this is now the last part before we get to Google Earth so that I don't make this video as long as possible. So what they're showing here is um, Forgotten New York. So in fact, if you guys uh, note, this website at one point, I think it was before the pandemic, they actually were hosting a tour on the Bay Ridge branch. Yeah, they were. And I remember this was in 2019 or 2018. And when I saw this, I was like, I want to do it. But unfortunately, it looks like they're not doing it no more unless I contact them. And if they could possibly do a tour, if they could do that. Then I'm going to record it and I'm going to show it on the channel because it will have a great connection to it because this is something that I've been talking about for a very long time. So it will definitely be good if 
that actually happens but of course it's just easier said than done at this point so in this site it's a two-page site in which it will show you pictures and a description regarding the stations that were part of it so the first one uh obviously fresh pond which is which was the northern terminus or the first stop either way you look at it of the former Ridge branch so here's how it looked in pictures there you see it uh, normally inadmissible for rail fans passing strangers on forgotten blockers, Fresh Pond Yards is a combined MTA New York and Atlantic Long Island Railroad Yard, servicing the MTA's Nassau Street Ridgewood Line, as well as uh, free operations. The station is located at a junction in Glendale, Queens, southern of Lutheran Alfaith Cemetery, with offices accessible from the entrance on Auto Road and 68th Street. Uh, the yards are the nearby Fresh Pond Road, are named for a former a fresh water pond that was filled in decades ago fresh in contrast to a salty or brackish as several ponds in the area could also be fresh meadows in eastern queens which is named similarly so that is a uh, pictures of how fresh pond looks at the moment obviously you have a lot of freight rash freight action going on there you have a lot of tracks there around there too and the famous bridge that you see there too is also visible on google earth uh this is a picture of once again manhattan beach branch once again this has a history to the British branch because once again once you reach the ocean avenue portion of the British branch there's where the junction used to be where the line started there and then it ended at uh, manhattan beach where the line went from north to south so that is why they show this so many times because this has a connection to that. And there you see it. So what they show is the map of 1884 and then on the right is the map on during the during the 1900s. Uh, this was a ticket of what used to be of the Manhattan Beach branch where it says from Manhattan Beach to Bay Ridge. The only thing though is it was like a adjacent thing where it would go from manhattan beach to that that stop that i was referring to and then here what they're saying is it operated like on a section because it would go from manhattan beach to bay ridge so if you were to refer to it on a map it would be from the middle of brooklyn i'm, so, I'm sorry let me take that back manhattan beach that's south of the map so the line would go north and then which once it touches that junction then i guess you had to change to another line and you would have to take the train going towards west, which is uh, Bay Ridge, as you see it there. All right, so there it says um, the journey begins. Here are pictures of um, what used to be a former station. Uh, the one that they're referring to here. This has to be. Uh, this has to be Myrtle Avenue. Or it has to be going past it. Because look, this is Myrtle in the, how they view it in the website. So this is Myrtle. This is how it looks. This is what I was talking about where I was, I was referring to the platform that you could still visibly see over here. So you can still see the platform in this picture. Over here is the picture of the bridge. There you can see it with the rail. And um, this is a picture dating back. If I had a guess, that probably had to be like the late 1800s of how the bridge looked back in the past. And this over here it was the station sign of the Bayridge Ranch Myrtle Avenue station. That's how it looked in the past. Uh, what they're showing you here is the old signal tower. There you have it. That's the old signal tower. Or if you had to make it much more complex, I would probably have to say right now, that had to be more as a old signal bridge for me. Because of the wide amount of space that it took to build. So I guess that probably had to be an old single bridge. And this is a closer picture of it. Up top is a view of the bridge showing you the street view of the outside. And again, they're showing you here Cypress Hills. And it, it kind of makes no sense because they also show it down there. So I don't know why they did that. A better picture would have been this because this, I believe, had to be the direction towards fresh pond this picture that you see here where you have the freight going towards that direction 
So there you go, Myrtle Avenue. Uh, after that, Cypress Avenue. Now I'm wondering, is that the same picture of on top? And I think it is. Oh no, no it's not. So this is a different picture over here. But the thing to note is around this station, right? You're going to see this factory, which you will also see in Google Earth. You will see this factory. Um, there used to be a factory. If I had to take a sharp guess, that had to be industrial. Because one thing to note, when you travel throughout this line or when you see it through Google Earth, you had a lot of industry. You had a lot of scrap, scrap yards. You had a lot of coal. You had a lot of lumber yards, transportation yards, like bus yards, all, all sorts of stuff. Every, everything you can imagine that refers to industry is what you would see throughout the line. Uh, in the picture on the left-hand side, that's a view of the tracks. So the first two you can see here. Uh, here you can see it too. But the thing to note is around that station, right, you have a vast, you have a vast empty area. Look at that. You have a vast empty area. And um, here they're just giving you an explanation of the area that surrounds this. Unfortunately, also when you cross throughout, uh, once you leave East New York and go towards the northern side, you're going to cross over a cemetery, which I think has to be around like the Bushwick area in Brooklyn. So you will see it. And this is what they're talking about here. That's, that's exactly what they're referring to. So that is what they're referring to uh, over here once again that is the infamous not infamous but the one and only is New York Tunnel there you have it this was when they were doing the tours and you're going to notice neglect obviously and a lot of graffiti going on the around the portal here you see it there you see it and of course all the garbage and those cans that you see there that's from the constant spraying that they were doing onto the walls and of course, you guys do know that around the East New York Tunnel, that was part of the Bay Ridge Branch. Currently, right now, you do have the L train that runs parallel to it. Uh, this is the view of when a train goes throughout that tunnel. There you see it. That's the portal view, or that's the tunnel view of when a train goes by. There you see it. You notice that the tunnel is very narrow. Only one track of it through there. But that also could give you an indication of how things were back in the days. Obviously, they probably only had like a either one track per per portal, or or probably just two in total, one there and one on the other side. Uh, there it says the tunnel boasts a near perfect roof vault. Uh, the porters resemble upside down capital U's, unlike other railroad tunnels in NYC. This one is unlit, and I doubt it ever was. Uh, the interior is barren of graffiti. As it is pitch black and, and I'm not sure if graffitius want to run the risk of an NYA local bearing down on them as they work. Oh no. Problem. The thing is though, you barely have trains going there anyways. <laughs> if anything, I could probably tear it out. There's probably only about two to three trains that pass by through there in a given day. So that's not really that much. And here is um, pictures of how is New York Station used to look. Like back in the days, here you see the two tracks. All right, there, there you have it. That is the picture of the platform on the left hand side of that picture. Over here, random picture. This one, better picture, because here it shows you the old signal over here. And here, once again, it shows you Long Island Railroad Great Crossing Illumination, the sign that you see on the wall of that tunnel entrance. This is how it looks inside the, the tunnel. There you see it. This is definitely abandoned. And in fact, those guys that um, that I saw that video, which at this point, I'll, I'll put it in the description so you guys can get a better idea of what I'm talking about. They actually went in here and, you know, they have flashlights. They were running around and fooling around and doing, you know, stuff that teenagers like to do. But they checked it out and I was like, wow. So people, I don't want to say people are actually able to go in there, but... You will have the brave and the ones that have a lot of courage that would want to go uh, in there. All right. And there you go. Once again, this is the famous picture. The same picture that I've been referring so many times. This is how the station looked back in the past. You will notice that more likely this was the track that the train stopped on. Obviously the platform here and this was the, the entrance 
in and out of the station. Mind you, this is just interesting how East New York looked like that back in the past. That's how it looked back in the past, but now uh, a whole different story. Uh, here are more pictures showing inside the tunnel. Obviously rotten, full of graffiti, neglect. I definitely would not want to go in there. Why? Because of the risk of potential asbestos. So I definitely would not suggest. What I would just do is I'll just take a picture outside. So for example, like around here, I'll take a picture. But inside, no. Like I said, you will have that risk of potential asbestos. And no, you do not want to get exposed to that. All right, so here is uh, the station after that, New Lots. Here are pictures of it. Really cool. Here, in fact, is where um, the tracks separate. And I believe this bridge here is only part of one track over here. A bridge that only contained one track. And over here is the opposite side where you had multiple tracks. I think in total you had two. Now, what they're mentioning here is that uh, there used to be a... Um, a station that was called New Lots Road, but then they actually named it New Lots Avenue, which I I don't think it makes makes any sense because uh, the street or avenue that the station was located on was actually New Lots Road. So I felt that they just should have just kept that, but who knows why they renamed it? But afterwards, it was renamed to that New Lots Avenue, and the name change came to existence for 20 years, as you see there. Now, the thing to know about this is that because of the Great Crossing Elim Elimination Program, this platform that you see visible here is gone. Because that used to be back in the days, but you don't see that no more, unfortunately. Uh, here are more pictures of when the train goes past that station. Like I said, it's going to be mostly industrial, mostly uh, rail equipment on the side or on the rear. Uh, that in the middle, if I had to give a, an insane guess, oh, well, they, they actually do give here what are those cars. That's the R17. Over here, they're just showing you stacks of ties, wooden ties over here. And uh, like I said, this is when the when you leave the station going towards the southern direction of the line. Uh, this here, in fact, that is he Hegeman Avenue, something like that. That is actually part of the New York 27 route, which, believe it or not, it starts in Brooklyn and it ends on the tip of Montauk, which is insane. All right, so this station was a rename because this was supposed to be Rugby. Well, it was named to Rugby, but in the past, it used to be called Ford's Corners, which is such a weird name. I will never imagine a name to a station to be called that, unless it's a farm that you're going into, which... That's what it sounds like. Uh, the picture in the left, that's a view of uh, the station, but showing you uh, the bridge that was associated uh, with that station. Uh, in the middle, it shows you the track or the location of where the station was. Here you have one track. Uh, if you're wondering what happened to the other tracks, I don't think that was the case because that what you see here, right? I think that used to be the platform of the station. Here you can see that it's visible. The only thing is over here, it's not. Uh, in this third picture, here you can clearly see it. that's, I guess, the before and after. Because these pictures look different from each other. Unless it's the opposite side. That I don't know. But unfortunately, of course, you will have a lot of garbage that people will place in these areas. Which, again, is unfortunate, but that's something that we cannot... That's something but that, I guess, something we can't do. Unless you want to get rid of all that garbage there, which is going to be really complicated. So, in fact, here they cross something really curious, which gives you the origin of Rockaway Avenue. So, in fact, in in the Indian terms of it, or indigenous, whatever you want to call it, that's what it used to be called, the Rekawaki, which is really cool. Uh, the name stands for the place of our own people. So, look at that, the place of our own people. So, that's Rockaway Avenue, the place... Of our own people. Really cool. Uh, the pictures that you see here are, um, I guess, pictures of when the of when the the line goes south. It has to be because the way we're looking at it is when the line goes south, not north, but south. And you're going to see that 
like I said, when you keep going down and down and down, yeah, it's going to be a lot of industries and also a lot of, uh, um, uh, I think it's bakery outlets because that's Entenmann's. And I have seen that before when, for example, when I used to live in Flatbush. Um, I recall that I used to go around there when I was younger. I don't know why, but I used to see like so many, like, what, what do you call those things? I, I forget the name of this, but you saw a lot of that. I could tell you, unless they, unless they give you here what that name is, what the name of that is, honestly forgot to be honest. Uh, this is more pictures of you showing the, the bridge, but the street you, what you see in the street, these two pictures, uh, over here, <laughs> apparently this was part of the Manhattan beer distributors, the pictures that you see here, don't know why they would show that uh this is a weird picture i don't know why they showed this either no idea but this is just a bunch of garbage that you see there now in fact what you see here i think is what i showed you that time when i did the part four which is in fact what i'm gonna show you right now which is from what i assume this area because that looks like king's highway that definitely looks like King's Highway, so I think this definitely is it. And in fact, the station that used to be around there was named that, Cohen Hoven. That's the name of the station. Uh, the left-hand side, it shows you one track, of course, and then you have these things going on. I just forget what that's called, but the picture on the left-hand side is a picture of recently, and then on the right, that's how the station looked in existence back in the day. It's there you see it, two tracks. Of course, now that disappears since it's out of service. And this picture is a station house of that station. So what you see here is this. Look at that. A nice little humble looking house. And so from here, look, now we're going to go to part two. Because look, after uh, Cohen Hoven, it has to be Vanderbilt Park. From what I assume, yes, it is going to be Vanderbilt Park. Okay. So here you see that in this portion of the line, like I said, you're going to have a lot of um, in industrial places. In fact, here we were. H here we were. I think what they're referring to here, this is Utica over here. I remember we, we walked out here and then we crossed down and then this is what we saw. So here is where we also recorded this area too. Look at that. Uh, Glenwood Road, Utica, definitely names areas that I definitely know a lot also look at that Glenwood Road Albemarle Beverly Clarendon Dorchester and Farragut were once lettered uh, but several decades ago real estate developers thought they'd sound better with sophisticated vaguely British monikers oh yeah because the origins right of like Glenwood Albemarle Beverly Dorchester those are all like British type of names there it says Avenue H through Z stuck with their letters, though Q became Quentin Road. Oh, look at that, because of Teddy Roosevelt's son, who died during the World War. Oh, so that's unfortunate, but at least we know some history regarding that. Uh, Utica is part of a different pattern altogether. There are streets that are referred to that, but there is also a city in upstate New York that is referred to Utica. All right, so look at that. Here is... um. Places where you pass by, like I said, industrial. Uh, I think that has to be the cable vision that's around there. Because of all these uh, wires that are around there. And all these vehicles that are parked there. Which actually look like work vehicles. I think that has to be cable vision that you see there. And if not, it has to be like a sort of like a city governmental site. Who knows what, what, what the case may be there. Uh, here is when it approaches... Uh, Albany Avenue throughout the Bearish Branch. Yes, definitely. That's right. I did see that when I was walking around there. So I think that has to be like East 42nd around that area. I definitely know that area well too. Uh, here, in fact, we showed this in part 4 too. This actually, in fact, is um, Brooklyn Avenue. Brooklyn Avenue and Avenue H. So this picture in the middle, right? So in, in Brooklyn, if you want to go there, it would have to be Brooklyn Avenue and Avenue H. 
and you have to walk towards the bridge. And once you get there, you will see this. Now what you see in the right, if you're wondering, wait, why does it look like that? That's because there is a certain point, once it reaches Flatbush, like Junction, No Street Avenue, it's going to be covered by like a portal, tunnel kind of a portal. And that's how it looks like. That's how it looks like. If you're wondering, should I go there? No, because you never know who is down there. And mind you, I don't know if I get, I don't know if I told you guys, but there was one time I was, I think I filmed when I did part four, when we did Albany Avenue, I remember looking down and then I saw someone down there and they didn't look like the best of people. So I said, yeah, I'm out of here. So yes, they're definitely right about this because look, like I said, the reason why it kind of looks like this so weird is because the fact that they built the the mall, the Junction Mall, where you have Target, where you have all of those stores surrounded by it. Yeah. And if you're wondering, the station that was associated with Nostrand, that was called Vanderveer Park, which in the past used to be called Flatlands. But for some reason, they called it Vanderveer Park. But the thing is, that was until 1924, as you see in the map. Uh, on the left, that's a layout of the the air the area map surrounded the station on the left, and then on the right, that's the that's a picture of the station house back in the days. Okay, so now we're going home. Why am I saying that? Because this now touches my area, and this touches where we started the part one. This definitely has connection to it because this right here that's Brooklyn College. So that's when the track crosses through Brooklyn College. So I would definitely say that has to be like Bedford Avenue. If you look on it in Google Earth, this probably has to be like around uh, Bedford. Uh, this is a picture of an old signal. Believe it or not, you will see it. So look, if I'm if I'm that curious, one day you will be able to see it. Uh, this is when the track enters um, Avenue H Q train station. This that you see here. And this is where I recorded that time. And that famous picture that I showed you guys so many times. That is how it looks on the on the track view. There you have it. Now, this is how it looked back in the days. So, interesting enough, look. I was right. Because I was like, wait a minute. You could put two tracks. Because, look, back in the past, it was two tracks. So, if you were to compare, look, one track right now. And then back in the past, two tracks. Over here, the same thing. Now, in fact, if you guys are wondering, here is where you had the Manhattan Beach Branch collide, where the other portion of the line went south towards Manhattan Beach. This picture that you see here. And mind you, this was dated around, um, like I said, in the late 1800s. Uh, this here, once again, like I keep telling you guys, this is where was the first location that I recorded. I was standing here. Caraman was also there. And then we were talking. We were like, oh, you know, uh, here you have a single track. Unfortunately, the area that surrounds the track is abandoned. It looks uh, dreadful, disgusting, filled with garbage, neglect. But believe it or not, this over here was a retaining wall. They used to be part of that station that was around here. Because remember, I was wondering, what, what is that? Why does it look like that with the, uh, you know, with the poles? looking like that but believe it or not that used to be part of the train station back in the past so that's really cool now this here like i said is when the line goes further south this right here shows you um where the track meets at ocean parkway over here so this is where it meets at ocean parkway and then um over here is when it touches borough park so they do give the actual location because there it says Graves then? Man, I hope they're referring to that. Look over here. Something like that. But I could definitely assure you this has to be around uh, Borough Park. And why am I saying that? Is because when we did, um, I think it was part two. We saw it. We went to, We went here. And then we showed you that the track curved. And not just that. It, um, it was so narrow. We were explaining to ourselves. How is it possible that they fit two tracks back in the days? Because look, this is how it looked back in the days. Look, two tracks here. Right here and then right here too. And as the, the line goes further down, this is where 
it touches McDonald Avenue, which is what is today the F line. And like I said, it's just garbage that you see all over the place. Look here, disgusting. Over here, look at that. Can't even explain it. There is no words to explain this buffoonery. But like what it mentions here, it, 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 some stuff like this, people just use it as dumps, as trash bins, like what the person refers to here. Perfectly said, because that's definitely the case. So like I said, here is where it touches McDonald Avenue. And here is where they used to have the Parkville station around here. Where you have Borough Park. So exactly where am I uh, referring to? McDonald Avenue today. McDonald and um, I don't know if that has. I don't know if that's Dayhill Road or if that's Avenue I. It has to be one of those. But I could assure you this is uh, the area that covers Borough Park. Now over here, this is where it covers the NND, which is New Utrecht. Why am I saying that? Because this is 62nd Street Station on the D. And here is where the, the track goes south, as I keep mentioning. This picture is when it goes south of 62nd Street. Here's where you'll see the track go further down. It, you see that it curves, but then it goes straight. Definitely had room for another track over here. And look at that. You have a old signal that used to be around here. I don't know if I saw it when I went there that time. I don't think so. The problem was I think we were too far from it. And okay, here is where now we're reaching the end. Here's where um, we touch the Ford Hamilton and 8th Avenue portion of the track with the pictures here. Here you see the end on the side with the new text that obviously the Queensboro line stole. Here is um, where the track is parallel with the Ford Hamilton Parkway station over here. Here is just a better image of the Fort Hamilton Parkway station on this side. Uh, over here is a secret picture, which I think only they had access because I wasn't able to see this. Maybe if we go around here, I don't... I think this has to be 3rd or 4th Avenue, somewhere around there, because there is a bus stop there. So I think it has to be 3rd or 4th Avenue. Um, cool picture, though. Over here, you see it, too. Interesting enough is that here is where the track goes from 1 to 2 because of the junction that you see here. So 1, the track continue goes this way, but then you have a junction that leads to the second track that's on the right. Uh, this this has to be 8th Avenue Station on the N train. That's definitely that. Uh, here is where the track goes down towards 5th Avenue as what it states in the, in the pictures. Look at that. Now it's two tracks. Cool. And, of course, on the side is where you'll see the end train. Of course, unfortunately, today now is the junks of the 46. Here is where the line or the track, it goes towards 4th Avenue. Where you could slightly see the R go outside, but that's just a couple of seconds. And that's it, which is depressing. Uh, this is how uh, the... The tracks were back in the days. Look how much tracks it was. You have one, two, three, four, five, six tracks in total in that side. And um, now here's where we wrap it up because this is just now Third Avenue and uh, the Bay Ridge Yard. So what's interesting enough is that you, s you notice that in the beginning, the first two stations were Bay Ridge and Third Avenue, right? Where this person was standing, right? This guy right here. That actually is where the 3rd Avenue station was. So there's where it was. Uh, this is a picture of when it was elevated back in the days. And this is when I guess it was going towards no the northern portion of the line. And then this has to be the last stop where you have the yard once again. How many times will we mention it? Too many times. Uh, here you can see a worker or an engineer. Moving the lever of this switch so that the train could go on a specific track. This is what you got to do. And mind you, that's not easy. You definitely have to know what you're doing. And with that, look at that. That will wrap it up with the analysis part. The historical part of the Bay Ridge Line. So there you go. One hour and 38 minutes. Yes, it took that long to cover all of this. And mind you, it was without reading all of this. But unfortunately... There is no point of covering all this because it's something that 
I practically was telling you guys when I kept explaining every single picture. And look, if you guys are wondering, this building that you see here, that's actually Brooklyn Army Terminal, which is actually home now to a ferry stop. Very interesting. So for those that want to take the ferry, there's now a stop at the Brooklyn Army Terminal. So there you have it. And the rest, once again, these are just pictures. Don't really care about it. Not really relevant. All right, so with that, now we will lead to Google Earth. This is uh, Google Earth, where now I'm going to show you uh, the locations of the 15 stations that I was able to grasp. Again, according to the sources that I had and by indicating where they were located based on those sources that, like I said, I mentioned. All right. So over here is where I have the first two. So let's go to that real quick. So here you can see is where I placed the, the Bay Ridge Station. Why you're saying that? Because it's the yard, and they said it's at 60 Pip Street. So there you have it. There is where I placed the, the Bay Ridge Station. Once again, the first stop. That's it. If you look at it in this direction, that's how it looks. Like I said, right now, at the moment, uh, they actually don't give you the, the, pic the date when this picture was taken, but we can definitely show you this is recent. So there's where I placed the Bayer Station. Now here's the thing. When I went next to locating where 3rd Avenue is, right? So first of all, that's a challenge. Because this is 2nd Avenue, right? And then um, somewhere over here, this is 3rd Avenue, right? I was wondering how in the world were they going to fit a station if it was underground? That's not possible, right? Because look, when you go here, this this corridor, this is actually 4th Ave, which will make no sense. I don't think they had a station here. This is where the train actually uh, splits. Look at that. There you have the tracks. So, in terms of where I named the 3rd Avenue station, right? I just referred to what the person said on the site. Because he said, here is where that person was standing at the 3rd avenue crossing so once i saw that i was like you know what let's just put it here because i don't even think there was another area to put that station i, I highly doubt that the station would be all the way at 8th avenue if you're gonna call it third avenue you you wouldn't put it at 8th avenue right that definitely would not make any sense at all so there's where i put the second station third avenue there you have it and so from here of course the Bayer's line progress. It kept going. There you can see the visible tracks as it keep going down the map. Once again, none of this was in action for the Bayer's branch. All of this was NYC, NYC Transit. Uh, that over here, that's Fort Hamilton. And um, as we progress more and more and more, what I decided to do was I decided to name the Brooklyn Bath and Coney Island Railroad Crossing here. If you're wondering why, it's because when I read that description, they said that they use New Utrecht Avenue for that for that station. And uh, based on how geography goes and the way how they implemented the stations, right? I am almost certain that they had to choose this as the area of the station. Because remember, there was also other lines that were crossing through here, so... Why not add a stop for the Long Island River there? Because it would make a lot of sense. Here, I could definitely tell you that makes a lot of sense. To put a Long Island River stop back in the past over here. That definitely made a lot of sense. So look. So for the first two stops, right? Bearage, that definitely had to be there somehow. Third Avenue is where I will have the question marks. And I think that's something where the viewers could have definitely uh, let me know if that's either correct or not. But again... It's just the fact that you had this thing there, right? It's just interesting that, yes, you have the yard, right? But this thing looks really interesting here. So once I saw that, I was like, you know what? There's where it's going to go. Because it just it just went from logic and going with what the sources told me. So there you go. That is the third station, uh, Brooklyn Bath and Coney Island Railroad Crossing.
their stop on the Bay Ridge branch. Okay, so look, this area that's like I said, New Utrecht, uh, the NND, and as we move on, like I said, here's where you will have the NIMBYs, right? Look, uh, this whole area, right? All of this, all of this is NIMBYs, residential housing, nice, sophisticated looking housing. You dare to put a station there? It's gonna be madness because you will have the NIMBYs saying, I don't want a station there because I don't want noise. You're gonna ruin my quality of life. Look, it's all these areas, all of this. That's all you'll see, residential places. Residential, you dare to put a stop there. Not happening. Okay, so I put Parkfield here because here they said that it was formerly named Gravesend, this area, but then it is now today McDonald Avenue, right? And they said that uh, the station ran in adjacent to the Culver Line, which is the F, obviously, right? So I decided to say, hey, you know what? I will put Parkville here because based off of what I saw in my sources, Parkville should be here. The station should be right here. So there you have it, Parkville. Around this area, like I said, McDonald Avenue, which is today home of the F. And if you're wondering, the area that surrounds this, this is Borough Park. Borough Park. And I think for New Utrecht, which is where you had Brooklyn Bath and all that sort of stuff. I think that also had to be Borough Park. Borough Park is a huge part in Brooklyn. So there you have it. Parkville, which is now today home of the F. And like I said, it used to be called Gravesend Avenue, but then now it's today McDonald. Okay, so after Parkville, here's where the challenge is going to happen. And I think what I did was I referred to... So in this section, right, I went with what I saw with Wikipedia, right? Because look, over here is where I named it Manhattan Beach Junction, right? Because here you had a line that went towards Manhattan Beach, right? I believe it had to be there. Because look, when I saw that map, it said that around the area, it was East 15, something like that, right? And what a coincidence. East 15 is actually around here. And look, here is the abandoned um, substation that was used to be part of Avenue H. The old building that you see here. That's the building that's today. This is the new one, and this is the old one, right? So in so when I was trying to come up with the situation here to say, uh, what, where should Manhattan Beach Junction should be located? I think it had to be there. I think it had to be there. And again, with what? The sources said in the Forgotten New York page, you did notice that they kept mentioning in that area where they have the pedestrian bridge, which is around here, right? They kept saying Manhattan Beach, Manhattan Beach, Manhattan Beach. So I said, you know what? I'm going to put it there. Here is where it's a potential toss-up. It is possible Manhattan Beach could be right here where you see Ocean Avenue, right? The reason why, look... The reason why I put that there is because in the Wikipedia page, they put Ocean Avenue Station on that list. So I said, you know what? Where the track meets with Ocean Avenue, like the corridor, maybe I'll just put that station there. Now, again, there is a possibility where it says Ocean Avenue, right? That actually might have been Manhattan Beach Junction. Highly possible. Who knows? Who knows? So there you go. But I decided to put it there. Manhattan Beach Junction there and Ocean Avenue right there. All right, so let's continue on. Uh, over here, this is this is what what used to be Vanderveer Park around this area. Now look, there could be two things here. Either the station was here or the station was right here at the start of the parking lot. Who knows? But... The location definitely has to be right because they said Nostrand Avenue. And if they said Nostrand, and if it touches the, the line or where the track is, then I think it has to be there. There's no other place where I would say the track meets with Nostrand because that actually is Nostrand over here. So there's where I put Vanderveer Park, which like I said, that station used to be called Flatlands in the past. So there's where I put Vanderveer Park, covering the area of Flatlands in Brooklyn. 
All right, so when the line continues progressing, here is where you don't really will have the issue with the NIMBYs because this is a more um, respectfully calm area here. I don't think the people will complain about the noise because the, the reason why I'm saying that is because uh, this area, which I think now becomes East Flatbush, the people around here, they're dying. Well, not dying, but they need something to go on. Yes, you do have the the B103 and and the B6, but that's not enough. So I'm pretty sure the, the whole concept of NIMBYism, I don't think the problem would, wouldn't be here. Because like I said, the people that are around here, you know, they're much more nicer. I don't think they would really complain about trains. As, as far as I know, I don't think the people here would complain about it. Now, the one thing to note is, as I covered so many times, here's where the track curves. And you're going to see that. It will it will go under under street level, and then here is the part. Like I said, once it passes, once it goes past Albany Avenue, here's where you're gonna start having a lot of like industrial parts. It actually starts right here, because here you see it. A lot of industrial places is where this portion of the track will become, and here's where it will also elevate. Here you see it. Uh, I believe in this portion, th this had to be like for two tracks. Space available for two tracks. All right, so let's go on. And I think, okay, so look. Where we visited, in fact, which was, um. that, that definitely has to be King's Highway, right? King's Highway and Farragut Road. Here's where you used to have Cohen Hoban Station. Look, over here. There's where I placed it because they exactly said it's between uh, Foster and Kings Highway or Foster and Farragut. And as well as East 52nd, which in fact, East 52nd is actually right here, right here. So I'm definitely correct on that. There is no way in hell I should be wrong about this location. All right. So let's continue on. Like I said, a lot of industrial. You're going to see a lot of cheese buses parked. Here you have... Um, scrap or whatever it is here that they're doing but like i said plain industrial all of this here is a parking lot for a lot of school buses that you see here all right so look we're, where we're actually approaching now so i i definitely could assure you that so this was king's highway right i believe somewhere around here ralph avenue has to be around i think it's right here Around here, I think, is where I have Ralph Ralph Avenue. And then you'll see that, like I said, here is where you have a lot of workplace locations, like headquarters or buildings. That's what you'll mostly see around this area of the track. Which, like I said, it goes up, up and over on the embankment. Uh, this over here, this definitely is Remsen. Yes, it is. Why am I saying that? Is because of the Department of Environmental Protection, which is here, and as well as the little hub with uh, places. Uh, here you got Dollar Tree. This is a gym. This is the BJ's that's there, and also the stores that are around here. Okay, so in terms of the station that is around here, uh, this is actually Ford's Corners over here. In terms of the station that's around here, I'm sorry, the the area that covered here. It was Rockaway Avenue over here. This this corridor that was around here. I, I believe it had to be Rockaway Avenue. So there's where I place uh, Ford's Corners, which once again, it was later named to Rugby. All right, so as we go on, now we're going to near towards the East New York portion of, of Brooklyn. So there you see it. Here's exactly what I was referring to. So if you're wondering, guys, in those pictures that they were showing you, on the on the website right that picture is actually here on Google Earth this is where it was but this is in the street view uh, upper view right over here this is the area where the former new lots station was around but in fact the other area that they also showed was this which like I said not only is this part of I-27 
I'm sorry, the route of New York around 27. But here is where they had the old New Lot Station place. It had to be around here. It had to be around here. And if anything, look, you see that little lump that's there? You never know. That might have been the station. I'm just guessing here. Because, like, you had a lot of space around here. So I'm just wondering. It's possible that more than likely the station had to be placed around here. So there you go. That's New Lots where I placed it. Like I said, this has to be correct. Because, first of all, New Lots Road is here. This is New Lots Road, right? That's New Lots Road. And then, um, over here... Over here, that's he Hegemon Avenue, whatever uh, the way you pronounce it. It has to be Hegemon Avenue. This corner that you see here, Hegemon, Hegemon Avenue here. And then um, New Lots Road, that's definitely right here. Right over here. All right, so let's continue on. So from New Lots, the distance between New Lots, right, and East New York, oh, yeah, it's kind of far. Look, from, from both blue points, right, New Lots... East New York, very, very, very far. If you guys are wondering uh, what lines are around here, that's actually the L and uh, the 3 as well. In fact, I believe here's where they both touch. And I always get confused what is what on the 3. I think it's Junius, and, and I think on the L is Sutter. Again, if I'm wrong, that is why the viewers are there to help. So there you have it. So we're, we're approaching now is East New York Station, which is right over here. So there you have it, East New York in Google Earth once again. Somehow, some way, you could still see the portal, the entrance of the tunnel, there you see it. Here you have a passageway for the track here as well, and then I think over here, but since I don't see a track, I only think you only have space for two tracks in here. So look, this is uh, East New York where that station used to be placed. Obviously, this is how it looks today with the platform still there. Really interesting. The only thing is uh, the the staircase is not there anymore, which sucks. Unfortunately, it sucks, but what can you do? The good thing here is that for the IBX in the future, this would be a connection to the Long Island Railroad. Because look, you get off here and then look. The only problem is the street, so I don't know what they're going to do with, with the connection. My only guess is it probably, the, the station will probably be placed here. Uh, the only challenge is how will you get to that Long Island Railroad Station as a connection. But, but look, that's not my job. I'm pretty sure the folks in the MTA and those that are going to work with the with the IBX line, they're going to come up with a way how to do it. But there you go. That's East New York, the location where it used to be on the Bay Ridge Ranch. All right, so let's continue. Let's go here. Now, here is something that I could tell you right now is a potential toss-up. But in a way, I don't think it may be a toss-up. Why am I saying that? Is because here, I believe this had to be like a platform. Because like you see like the silver lining right over here? So this is interesting because, look, you guys noticed that in the beginning, I did say that this used to be Central Avenue, but then it was, it got rid of because Central Avenue was only in existence for about like a couple of years, and then they said goodbye to it. So that is why I said, you know what, let's put Bushwick Avenue here because it makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense. So here I place Bushwick Avenue for um, the Bay Ridge stop for the Long Island Road. Again, like I said, it is a toss-up. I might be right, and I might also be wrong. But in terms of the location, I might, I, I def, I'm definitely right. Because this, this area is considered now to be Bushwick in Brooklyn, around here. Once you leave um, Canarsie, right? Not, I'm sorry, not Canarsie. Once you, once you leave East New York and you go north of the borough, that's now Bushwick. So there you go, Bushwick Avenue Station right there. There's where I placed it. As we go up, here is Cypress Avenue. Here's where I placed it. If you're wondering why I put it there, that's because this area that surrounds it is actually Cypress Avenue around here. This is Cypress. And again, that whole concept of the silver lining. And look, interesting enough, you see the platform here somehow. Look, right here. So look, from there and from here. So I might be right. 
again, this is another of those 50-50, but I truly think I might be right on that. So there you have it, Cypress Avenue, the stop on the Bay Ridge Ranch. So from here, it would be Myrtle. And I am 100% right on that. This definitely has to be Myrtle, because remember, when we refer to that website, Forgotten New York, they, they showed that in one of the pictures. And once I saw that, I was like, you know what, that is Myrtle Avenue. That has to be Myrtle. And what a coincidence. The corridor that is around this bridge is Myrtle. So there you go. That is where they had the former station of Myrtle. And the one thing to note real quick, you guys do notice, is that it widens. You notice that it widens. And now you have a lot of tracks around here. Now, interesting enough, also in the pictures that you saw was the old signal tower, which is present in Google Earth right here once you go past the station. There you see it. There you can see it. Really cool. And um, after this is Fresh Pond. But here is the challenge on what I'll say right now. Because look, Fresh Pond was the last stop, right? But I don't think the station was here because the bridge is here. If you're wondering, where is the actual station of Fresh Pond? It is actually somewhere here. Like I said, uh, this is Metropolitan, right? Metropolitan Avenue is over here. And then this street that is adjacent of it, that's Fresh Pond Road. And what a coincidence, when I looked up the station, that is the stop, Fresh Pond Road. But the problem is, this was the station for the Lower Montauk branch, not, not the Bay Ridge branch. So there is where the challenge happens. So because of that, and since this has nothing to do with the Lower Montauk branch, I focus on the Bay Ridge branch, which is why I just put it here. I just put the station there because I, I went with my gut and I decided to say, hey, you know what? Since this area is Fresh Pond, I will put it there, and that's that. Why am I saying that? The problem is, if you continue going north, you're touching a new neighborhood. Uh, in the likes of what? Glendale or Maspeth? We're not <laughs> We're not trying to go up there. No, 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 no. Because first of all, the, the line ended here. And from there, no, 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 no. There was no such thing as Glendale or Jackson Heights or whatever. No. For the Bay Ridge branch, this was the terminus, and that was it. So there you go. That does it. I um I showed you all the stops. Once again, this is how it looks up and above. There you have it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 total stops in which I showed. Like I said, Bay Ridge Avenue, that has to be correct. 3rd Avenue, I'm not sure. Uh, Brooklyn Bath and whatever. That definitely is correct. Same goes for Parkville. Um, for Manhattan Beach Junction, that's a big toss-up. I, I really want to say there's where it was because I followed that old map that I saw on Wikipedia. That old map. So I said, you know what? Let me put it there. The reason why I didn't put Manhattan Beach Junction here is because there was a stop called Ocean, right? And what a coincidence. This area is Ocean. So I decided to say, hey, you know what? I put it there. Uh, after that, uh, Vanderbilt Park, I'm definitely right on that. There's no way I'm wrong on that. Uh, Cohen Hoven, definitely right on that. Where you see Ford's Corners, right? In fact, I didn't really mention this part. But uh, this part, it's either Rockaway Avenues or, um, or East 92nd. Something, something about that. Is around here, around the Remsens of the area. I think East 92nd is around here. They do give the location in that site. So regardless, when I was doing the the research, I went with that information, and that's why I put it here. So that's why I put Forest Corners there. That should be correct. Uh, New Lots. That definitely should be correct too. No question about it. Uh, East New York. That's a no doubter. That should be correct. Uh, this one Bushwick toss up. You never know. That I might be wrong on that. Uh, Cypress. Now, in fact, one thing that I didn't mention was the old 
facility that they showed in the in in one of the websites of the history part. That old building, I think it has to be up. It has to be somewhere around here. Oh, right here. Look, there you go. So in that map, right, in that website, that old building that they showed is actually here, right? But what they were explaining was that was the building that was past the station, not at the station. So like I said, since this is Cyprus, I said, hey, you know what? I'm just going to put it there, and that's it. Uh, Myrtle, like I said, I went with the websites. This definitely looks right because of the fact that one of the pictures, they showed it there. So I said, yes, that's it. And then, like I said, Fresh Pond, that is a gamble. You never know. might be right. It might be wrong. I'm not sure, but there is where I place uh, the final stop. All right, so with that, this was a long video. It's going to take like a day or two to watch the whole thing, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. So for the first part, like I mentioned in the beginning, it's the historical part where I visited numerous websites and I went over them one by one. And then in the last part is Google Earth where I show you guys literally where I placed all the stations using the sources and information that I showed you in this video. So with that, thanks for watching. Like, share, comment, and subscribe.